In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to deploy a Flask app that uses a Celery worker. You'll see that it only takes a few minutes to go from a local setup to a fully deployed app that anyone can use. While the general steps for deployment are similar across most platforms, in this video, I'll use a service called Savala, who also happens to be this video's sponsor. Savala is probably the easiest app platform I've used. It has really great defaults, and it will auto-detect the type of project you're deploying so you can skip a bunch of configuration. By just clicking through a few screens, you'll be able to deploy your apps in just a few minutes. In addition to deploying Flask apps, you'll be able to deploy static sites, like the output of a front-end JavaScript build, databases like Postgres and Redis, which you'll see me use in this video, and an object storage, so you can have a place to put any non-app files that your project may need. If you want to try Savala, click on the link in the description so you can sign up and try it out. Okay, so now let's get into how to deploy a Flask and Celery app. Okay, to start, let me show you what I have. So I have this Flask app that uses Celery. So it has a route that takes in a prompt. It will call a task that will generate an image. So right now I don't have any kind of environment set up. So I'll use UV to create one. And then I'll remove the main.py and the readme because I won't need them for this example. But everything else I'll need. So I'm using Python 3.13. Uh, the pyproject.toml doesn't have any dependencies yet. So let me go ahead and install everything. So I'll do UV add, and then I'll add a Flask, Flask SQL Alchemy Lite. I'll add OpenAI, I'll add Redis, and I'll add python.inv. Oh, and I need Celery, of course. So I'll add all those. Okay, so they've been added. And then let me run the app. So I'll do UV run flask run to start up the flask app. And then for the celery worker, I'll open up another terminal and I'll start that up. So to do that, it's just UV run celery dash a make celery worker dash L info. So dash L is for the login. So I have the generate image task. And then if I go to the browser here, I can just describe an image that I want a computer, I'll hit generate, and then it gives me this placeholder at first, and then once the image is done, it will show the image. Okay, so going to refresh, it should be done just about now. And we see an image of a computer here. I can just describe an image that I want, a computer, I'll hit generate, and then it gives me this placeholder at first, and then once the image is done, it will show the image. Okay, so going to refresh, it should be done just about now. And we see an image of a computer here. So we know the app works in our local environment, so we wanna get this in a deployed environment. I want to use Postgres, so I need to add a Postgres driver. So I'll do psycho, pg2 dash binary because that typically works on my machine and i'll add those so now i have all the dependencies here in my pi project file so i can close this and now what i want to do is i just want to commit everything so all this code here really everything except for the env so let me add env to git ignore and then i'll just do git add dot git commits and we'll save first commit so that added everything to this repo, committed everything. And now what I wanna do is I wanna get this over to Savala. So I need to start by creating a repo on GitHub. And here we see the create new repository page. So I'll create this, I'll call this uh, deploy celery flask. Okay, we'll make it private. And then I don't need to add anything else. I'll hit create repository. And then I need to go to the second section here because I already have an existing repository copy this first line, paste it in, and then I can do git push origin master. Okay, so now if I go back here and refresh, all my code is now on GitHub. So I shouldn't have to make any more changes to my code. I should just have to go to Savala and deploy this. And of course, if you're using any other service, the ideas are exactly the same. So let's go over to Savala. Here's my dashboard. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to create an app. So let's go over to applications here, and then I'll create an app, and I have my GitHub account attached to my Savala account. I can search for the repo, and then I'll select automatic deployment on commit. 
I'll keep the name the same, the location the same. And then for the resources, pick whatever is appropriate for your project. In this case, H1 is fine for me. If I wanted to use a domain, I'd need at least S1. But for this example, I'm just going to deploy and let them generate a domain for me. So I'll click H1 and then hit create, not create and deploy, just create because there are some other things that I need to do. So notice here it's using port 8080 for the connection to the app. So there's basically like the web server in a sense. And then the app server here is in the middle. And then port 8080 is how they're connected. So I just need to keep that in mind when I start G Unicorn. So to start G Unicorn, I need to go to settings. And in here, there is a custom start command field that I can fill in. So if you're using something like Django, then it would automatically be able to figure out what you want because Django is pretty popular and people start it in the same way. But because this is Flask and there are multiple ways of doing it, you have to specify a custom start command so the app will start properly when you deploy it. So that custom start command is going to be gunicorn. So I have it installed already or I have it in my Pi project file and it will be installed when the app is deployed. I want to do dash B to bind it to 0 0.0.0.0 port 8080. So you can change 8080 to another port if you want, but in my case, I'll just use 8080. And then I'll put log level info so I can see some logs. And then finally, I need to specify the location of my Flask app. So if I go back here, because I followed the standard way of creating a Celery app from the Flask docs, in my make Celery file, I have both a Flask app available and a Celery app. So we'll come back to the Celery app, but this Flask app is what I wanna specify here. So here it's in my make celery file, then I'll do a colon and then the name of the object in the make celery file that represents the flask app, which is flask underscore app. So that's it. I'll just hit update. And now what I want to do is I want to create the databases for this project. So I'll have a database to store the long term data. So that will be Postgres. And then I'll have a Redis database basically to store the celery information for when the app communicates to celery. So let's go back to the dashboard and let's go to databases here. Now I'll create a couple of databases. So create a database. And for this, I don't think I need to make any changes. So let's see, Postgres is selected. The user and the password that are generated are completely fine. The location is fine. Just make sure the location is in the same data center as your app. So that just needs to match. And then for the resources, I'll use the smallest resource. So I'll hit create here. And then while this gets created, I'll go back and I'll do the same thing for Redis. So add database and then I'll select Redis here. And everything looks fine. Location is the same. I'll hit create. And now Redis is being created as well. So now let's go back to our app. Let's click this here to go back to applications and then deploy Celery Flask. So that's our app. And what we want to do is we want to add connected services. So I'll go here to add connection and then internal connection. So I can select the service. So I have the two here. So I'll start with this one and I'll check add environment variables to the application. So this is for Postgres. And really, I only need the database URL. So I'll delete everything else. And I'll rename this to be flask underscore SQL alchemy underscore URI. And I'm doing that because in my ENV, that's what I have. So I'll do flask Redis URL. And then in my Dunder init here inside of create app, I'm using from prefix ENV. So everything starts with flask. So however you set up your environment variables, just make sure they match on Savala or whatever platform you're deploying on. And then because I'm using Postgres, uh, I do need to add a Q and L to get it to work in SQL Alchemy. So Postgres alone is not enough. I need to add the Q and L before the colon here. And then I can just add connection. And now what I want to do is I want to do the exact same thing, but for the Redis database. So let's go over and select the Redis instance. And then same thing, I can delete the ones that aren't Redis URL. And then I'll just add Flask before Redis URL here and then add connection. OK, so if I go to environment variables here, uh, we'll see that I have the Flask Redis URL and the Flask SQL Alchemy URI. In my project, I need one more. So I'll go ahead and add that. This is the OpenAI API key. And I'll just put that in. OK, so I've added the OpenAI API key. So now let's go ahead and deploy. So if I just go down here, I can click on deploy now. 
and then the branch that I'm using is master. So I'll hit deploy application here. And then it's just going to go through the process of building everything and deploying it. So let's take a look at the logs. It just takes a moment for them to appear. Okay, so it's cloning into the uh, repository. It's setting up Python 13, PostgreSQL. Um, the start command is here, gunicorn port 8080. And then it's gonna go through the process of building a Docker image first, and then it's going to start it. So I'll just wait for that to complete. Okay, so we see the web process has been deployed successfully. So let's try to visit the app and we'll see what happens. So we get the page here, so it looks like it's deployed, but let's see what happens when I try to actually run it. So I'll try to generate an image of a computer again and hit generate. And it doesn't create the placeholder, which suggests there was a problem in Celery. So we just go back to overview to set up Celery, and then we want to create a worker. So create worker here. And we need to specify the start command. So the start command is going to be the same as it was in our local environment. So celery a, and then make celery. So that's the file where the celery object is. And celery app is the default name that it's looking for. And then worker. And then for this, we want to set concurrency to be one. So dash C to one, because the default is something like 16. And that's way too much for the server size and for our project, we only need one. So I'll put concurrency to be one and then dash L info for the login. So let's go ahead and create the background worker. And then it says I have undeployed changes. So I'll just hit deploy changes here. And I'll wait for the deployment to finish. Let's go to the log so we can see when it finishes exactly. Okay, so it looks like it's deployed. So let's go ahead and refresh. And here it picked up on the fact that uh, there was an existing Celery task waiting in Redis to be run. So as soon as I started the background worker, it was able to work. So let's see if the image gets generated. And it does. So this is the computer that was generated on my production app, whereas this is the one that was generated locally. So same prompt, but different image. And now our app is deployed. So we see that we have our Flask part working, the Celery part is working as well. So let me show you some things about Savala uh, that you may need to know how to use. So the web terminal is an important one. So if we change this to Bash, Bash is just a little bit easier to work with. Um, what we can do is we can start a virtual environment by doing dots, and then the virtual environment is going to be in slash OPT slash VENV slash bin slash activate, right? So then I can do things like Flask shell and I could import files. I can run functions in here. If I needed to uh, migrate the database, I can do that. If I needed to create the database tables, I could do that, um, but it's not necessary in this case, but anything you need to do in a terminal, you have this here on Savala. Another thing that you might want to do is you might want to create a disk. So the servers on your app will only last as long as one deployment. So if you redeploy, like everything gets rebuilt. So if you have any files on that server, they're going to disappear. So if you want to be able to persist files, then you need to create a disk and you can just click on this here and it will create a disk for you. And then when you go to save, just put them in the directory that is specified when you create the disk. If you need to add a domain, you can, um, upgrade to an S1 resource, so the next biggest resource, and then you'll be able to add uh, domains, custom domains, and it will walk you through the setup process. It's just a couple of steps. And then other things here like networking, it just depends on the needs of your app. As you can see with our app, uh, we don't need to really do anything. Port 8080 was fine for us. We don't wanna have any restrictions. Um, let's see, processes, this is what we see here. These are the two processes that we set up, so pretty straightforward. And then finally, I would say, apart from the logs, which we've already seen, uh, we have the analytics. So if you want to know uh, what your servers are doing, so how much memory is being used, CPU and requests and all that, uh, you can go to the analytics here. And then basically the rest is just settings and user management. So I hope this was able to help you understand what it takes to deploy a Flask and Celery app, not only to Savala, but 
basically any service because they're all going to be very similar. If you're interested in learning how I built this example app, I have a video that I made a while ago where I actually built this. So if you're interested in watching that video, just click here and you'll be able to learn how I built this Flask Celery app that uses OpenAI to generate images.